Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good. Hanging out outside with some birds chirping. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. <laughs> but yeah, um, before uh, you know, we begin, just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Trevor Osman. You know, I started this platform called Studio One. Uh, it's a platform based out in Toronto where I get to interview you know, international acts like yourself, you know, acts across Canada and local acts in Toronto mainly, because I feel like we don't have too many media platforms in Toronto. So I really wanted to build this, you know, for our city. So amazing to get you on it. Cool. Yeah, dude, it's great to, great to be here. Minnesota's, you know, reasonably close to Canada. So yeah, exactly. we're almost there. Uh, before we really begin, can you just, you know, briefly introduce yourself and then we'll get started. Sure, yeah. Uh, I'm Jake Lupin. Uh, I play in a band called Hippocampus usually, uh, but I'm putting out a record under uh, my last name, Lupin, um, right now. So it's my first solo endeavor. Amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, just in general, you know, before we really dive into the music, with quarantine, you know, how have you been handling that? You know, how is life? You know, have you been in Minnesota the whole time? Like, you know, how has it been for you? Yeah, I've been in Minnesota pretty much the whole time. Um, it's been good. I've just been working a lot. Um, in addition to like making music for this project in the band, I also do production. So um, since quarantine started, I've been working on a couple different projects, which has been cool. Uh, I've been staying busy there. Um, on obviously like in late May, Minnesota kind of like went up in flames with yeah. the murder of George Floyd. Um, so that was a pretty crazy thing to live through. Uh, went out like protesting a bunch, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so it's it's been just a f fucking weird time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I know you went to you know performing arts school, and um, a lot of artists, you know, when they're really starting out, you know, school is kind of this thing where. You kind of decide, you know, is it going to be school education that's the path or is it going to be music? You know, for you, you know, you had this opportunity to go to an art school. You know, talk to me about how that helped hone your craft and the way you gained from, you know, being there. I know that's where the band kind of came together, but for you personally, how did that help? I think being in a program where, like, it was so focused on, on growing as an artist was, like, the most important part of, of what I got from high school, like, building a community um of artists was probably like the biggest part like all my friends who i hang out with now i went to high school with it felt like very much like a college sort of campus like i kind of got college out of the way in high school like it was an open campus um and you had like majors and track focuses so for me i like majored in vocal performance yeah. so i studied like opera singing which is kind of crazy <laughs> Not I, I did that for like four years um which gave me like better control over my instrument. Um, all my friends were in the instrumental track, so they studied like jazz music. Um, so I was like in bands with them all the time. So I'd be able to pick up on like what kind of things they were doing and what they were learning, just like, you know, by association, sort of like, oh, dude, can you show me that chord? Like, what the fuck is that chord? Like, yeah. what are you playing here? Um, so I was able to kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of like learning better control over my instrument as a vocalist and then also like learning from my friends like you know music theory and and songwriting for sure um i know you know a large part of your career is with the band but i really want to dive deep into you know this, this new solo record but just briefly you know how has being with the band you know and releasing records and doing shows how has that helped you into this um stage in your career going you know releasing a solo record yeah, I mean, I pretty much, like, grew up on the road. I mean, we started the band when I was, like, 18, and then we were on tour, like, when I was 19. Um, so I just had to grow up, like, really quickly, like, as a musician, as an artist. Um, and, like, starting that young gave me room to, like, grow as I was getting older. Like, we had a platform from an early age and, like, high expectations, so I had to keep getting better at my craft in order to kind of keep up with the way music was changing. Like, yeah. I didn't want to just be known for what I did at like 19. I wanted to like keep improving and growing. Um, so that was like a big thing that I learned. And then just being around those guys, like they are all such incredible musicians and songwriters. I think that we've all learned a lot from each other and we've all grown a lot from each other over that time. Um, 
also just like getting into production like i never recorded before hippocampus really like i recorded when i was really young and then i took like a long break from it in high school i didn't like have a good computer or recording program or whatever so when we were making our first record landmark i bought a laptop and pro tools and a microphone so i could record my own vocals yeah so i was hated thinking in the studio while there's like everyone there um so like at the very least like the the band gave me like the need to get a computer and like start recording and then i got interested in production and then i was like oh man i really would love to make my own record at some point and record it and like produce it yeah uh yeah so it gave me the means to kind of be able to do this sort of thing and also the fan base too like coming out with the project and like knowing that there's people that already like fuck with what i do you know gave me the the confidence to be able to be like yeah let's fucking do it let's go let's see what'll happen yeah. you know i'm not starting from like zero i'm starting at like you know, thirty percent maybe of what hippo is. Yeah. Um, growing up, you know, listening to music, listening to artists, you know, going into you know debut album, you know, what does a debut album mean to you, and you know, what does it feel like for you putting a debut record out? You know, in terms of just artists that you grew up listening to, you know, you kind of are in that same you know vein. You're about to release this uh, introduction to yourself. You know, you know your own experiences. How is that? Uh, I think it's really great. I mean, like, again, when I first released music with with Hippo, I was like 19, you know, so I was like a very different person from who I am now. And you only get to debut a project once. So like when we dropped Hippo, there was like, with that early shit, there's always going to be expectations based on like that early stuff. Like with this record, like there was no expectations of what it was going to be. And I got to just document who I was in the moment and like, use everything that I learned and everything, you know, all the ways that I had grown as an artist to be able to like put this project out the right way. I kind of knew the pitfalls like previously of like releasing music and, um, yeah, I like knew all like the, the tough parts about it. So I was able to like, like the learning work curves. the release yeah. better this time around. Yeah. And, um, you know, this record, I've read that, you know, seems freeing to you you know uh maybe in the past you felt like you had to hide certain things you know for on this record you know what does that you know mean to you, you know in terms of just letting it all out you know is yeah it, is it cathartic I, you know yeah when you're in a band like you just have to compromise a lot you know on your own vision like the music we make within the band is very much like the band sound and the band's music so like even if it doesn't necessarily appeal to my taste it like appeals to whatever the vision that the that the band has you know it's like a democracy and with this project i just didn't have to compromise anything like it was fully like my vision and my taste and it was like the first time i've been asking those questions of like oh what do i want to do here and i have to answer like every question that i have which is you know like all of it rests on me um which was a challenge um being so different from what i was used to but like it was a really healthy exercise and i learned so much from it that i could bring in it like further collaborations that i do I think once you like know yourself as an artist by doing something like this, it just makes you better in every other collaboration that you that you have moving forward. Yeah, and um, I know you know you worked with the uh, producer BJ on this uh, record. I got a chance to listen to you know the record in its entirety. You know the production is really incredible. You know the vocals are really great and they shine through. You know for this record, you know in terms of the '80s, and I think you know you guys worked with you wanted to be make it modern, and you touched upon like Tears and Fears and Prince and stuff like that. You know. How did you guys cohesively come to the record? I know you started writing it or working on it during the Bambi's release. How did you guys come together to craft this record? Uh, BJ and I talked about doing this fellow record basically like right after Landmark dropped, just because we always like worked well together. I think like when it was the band mix with BJ, it was like a more challenging approach just because there's like so many opinions floating around um, and like different tastes. But BJ and I's taste always have kind of like aligned. Um, so I just pulled up with like a, a bunch of demos that I had made on my computer and I would just kind of like hand them off to BJ. And a lot of them, like we use the vocals from those, like BJ would take my melodic elements um, and then kind of like put drums that like hit really hard underneath it and like affect it in a crazy way. So like most of these songs I made and like on my laptop and just like dropped them off with BJ and then he did his thing. And then we were just like, Oh, this is cool. Um, but I wrote like a, a bunch of songs. I wrote like probably like 22 songs for it. And we narrowed it down to like eight. So <laughs> yeah. I always like write a bunch for a project and then kind of like pick the best ones out of that. I'm very much like a, 
a quantity over quality type sure. of creative. Yeah. And touching on, you know, this idea of, you know, you producing, you know, I read that that's something you really want to do and during quarantine. You've been doing that. You know, I actually had a chance to talk to Samia, you know, around her, the baby record. I just, oh, I, sick. yeah, just recently. I know. Legend. You, yeah. I know you've been for her too. Uh, <laughs> talk about that, you know, cause as an artist, there are so many different you know, pathways you can take, you know, being in a band, you know, releasing your own records, producing, talk to me about that aspect. I think like fulfilling another artist's vision is like, it, it's, it's like almost more satisfying than like making a song yourself to like make something for someone else and see them be stoked with the way that their song is portrayed is like way more magical. Cause you could like appreciate the song and appreciate the artist in a way like you never can with yourself. Like yeah. I can look at Sammy and be like, you are an incredible artist and like your songs are incredible. And like what you're doing is amazing, you know, more so than she'll ever be able to see in herself and like showing her that being able to be like, listen to how like incredible you sound and like, yeah. you know, building a palette behind it that like highlights her voice in like the best ways and her songwriting in the best ways. Um, so yeah, it's just like way more gratifying even than doing it on your own just bringing that like it's like rediscovering music again like what you love about music yeah so in a sense you know there's a lot of fulfillment in that so i guess you know in the future you see yourself really diving in to that a lot yeah yeah i've been doing stuff so um yeah i've just been like working with more artists i really like me and my friend caleb who worked on my record and also worked on um sammy's records um and our friend nathan have a band called baby boys and then we also do like producing um so we just have some like lofty goals about like bringing artists in minnesota and like kind of making minnesota like cool again and making it like a hub for um hub for artists like we want people to come here and we want to build out like a strong scene here and uplift the artists here and also just bring national artists like i was saying like to this spot and just yeah. like get cool people coming through minnesota because there's like so much crazy energy here right now and i feel like that's an important time to capitalize on it that's actually like really important too you know for me building studio one that's me building like a media in our in my city so for you you know what's you know minnesota's music scene like you know of course you're part of it but what is it like from from a toronto person's perspective you know i'm not too sure what goes on there for you you know what is it like um it's pretty diverse you know there's a bunch of cool like um it's like changed a lot it, i feel like it's like in the process of changing right now probably like five years ago there's like a bunch of like hip-hop collectives here that were really cool um there's always like indie rock and indie folk and those are kind of like the three primary genres but it's like flipping over right now there's like a generation like younger than us um just like doing some really cool shit and i like can't even like pinpoint like genre like genre is like so dead it's yeah, like it really there's all this crazy like crossover going on uh genre wise i think it's like in the process of, of being built so it's hard to define it right now but i think in like three years from now people will be like oh like we'll be able to define like what the scene is but now it's kind of like i don't know it's growing yeah it's like in the pro right? that, that's exciting um going back to this record and you've released you know a few singles um talk to me about the few singles they've released. Um, I think you released visuals for vampires. Um, talk to me about all of that. And on a, just a side note, how does it feel releasing records, you know, during this time, you know, in the world? It feels like it's definitely strange not being able to like tour on anything because like performing is such a large part of what I've done for the past, like six, seven years. Like you put out a record and you tour it and, you know, touring is, is the way to see how your music is working around the world. You know, like you can pull up in a place like Toronto and see that people are like listening to your music. And yeah. it's like, oh, it's like your way of getting feedback on how the yeah, record is actually doing in a grassroots way. Um, so that's like strange. But I do think that people are like listening to a lot more music now just because there's like time to actually like sit down. This is a pretty like introspective record. So I think it's a good time to like put it out just because people are like, able to like sit down and listen to it just because like you don't you can't do anything else you gotta like yeah. stay inside and like consume media um yeah so it's like a good time i'm stoked to drop these singles like i went harder in like the video and like visual department than i would usually go 
or that I've gone in the past, like with the band. Um, Aaron Anderson is like kind of is like a heavy hitter. He did like the Vampire and Murder video, and he's worked with Bony Bear a lot. I've always been a fan of like what Justin has done aesthetically, so it's cool working with him. And then the dude that did the first video, Lil Fuchs, um, I've been a fan of like for a really long time. He made a This Will Destroy You video. It's like incredible yeah. so i've been wanting to work with him since like the early days of hippocampus and finally this project he's like all right i'm down so i was like hell yeah um yeah and i just like danced in front of a green screen like i shot like you know uh vampire or um murder and may on the same day it's like this it's like, <laughs> it was just all like this green screen studio and they're just like all right dance in front of a green screen and i was like all right whatever um yeah, and then Vampire I shot with uh, our photographer, Britt O'Brien. Um, shot some, like, camcorder footage. There's, like, a whole video that exists that's just, like, camcorder footage of me in a vampire costume, like, going around town. Yeah. Um, we brought that to Aaron and kind of, like, chopped it, and then he, like, animated all those, like, crazy color things. And and um, David Kramer, who does my graphic design, did all, like, the text. So, yeah, I'm stoked at the way everything looks. Like, the aesthetic is, like, really polished in a cool way yeah um, have you had a chance you know to show the rest of the bandmates you know this record uh, have you had that time yet or like and, and yeah so hey, yeah how, i how said i'm like pretty much right after it was done um and they were all really stoked on it i didn't show them it like while i was working on it like at all i kept it like super tight i was like i'll show it to you guys when it's done like that's using my mentality like i hate sending like demos and stuff out i like to just show people things uh when it's done so i waited until like the very end of it and then i like showed them in they were obviously all like very supportive and stuff and they all have their own projects and um we all like work on each other's shit like whistler worked on um a couple of the looping tracks just like through some like auxiliary percussion on it um so yeah it's like all in the family it's like that scene i was talking about like we yeah. all play on each other's stuff and we all like you know, we we are a band, but we're also like a collective of individual artists as well. Yeah. Um, how does it feel this time around? You know, the record is uh, being released. You know, in a week or two. You know, you've, re you've released records with Hippo Campus. You know, you've seen how the reception has been. It's been out in the world for this record in particular. You know, how's it going to feel when it's out in the world and it's um your record? You know, is there anxiety around it? You know, how is it? You know, how does it feel being so close to being out? Having a record is a lot like giving birth. Um, and I think like postpartum depression in terms of like releasing an album is like a, a very real thing. Like yeah, sure. there's this dude, Al Sparhawk, who plays in a band called Low and he produced the very first Hippocampus record. And he told me once, um, we were sitting outside the studio after we listened to songs for like the first time after they were all done, just kind of like meditating on it. And he's like, this is the closest that you'll ever be to the songs. And when you put them out, that's like when the rest of the world gets to own them. You know, like you own them until the moment it's released and then everybody else owns them. Um, so, I, you know, I'm bracing myself for that. It's it's always like a weird, you know, sadness. I was even talking to Sammy about that. Um, you know, it's like everyone's like freaking out about it. It's this cool thing. But, you know, you're kind of mourning for the fact that like it's no longer yours. It's, it's everyone else's. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, with records, an artist can hold on to that piece of record for a year or two. And, you know, as fans, you know, we just get it immediately, but we don't know how long that artist has kept it inside them, you know? Yeah, totally. How long that baby's been a cooking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, usually when I get to, like, near the end of interviews, I would ask, like, an artist, you know, how's the rest of your looking? You know, I usually have, like, tour dates, you know, I've seen, and, you know, because of COVID, you know, uh, that has all stopped. So for you and, you know, particular, um, Throughout this journey of your career, you know, Hippocampus, we know with this record, um, what's something you've learned about yourself personally that has elevated your music? You know, something you didn't you know, know when you were at the performing arts, you know, what's something you've learned throughout this journey that's really made you a better artist? Mm. That's, a great <coughs> that's a great question. <coughs> hmm. I think just like a sense of like self-confidence and then also just like understanding my tastes and like what I like as a human. And I think that like extends beyond art into everything. Like I made this record about a breakup and, you know, I was with this person for like seven years from the time when I was 17 until I was 24. So basically like growing up, I had like lived my life 
like kind of like for this person that I was with and then for this band that I was communing with and I just kind of lost touch with like what I liked um and who I was and I think this record like gave me the chance to like find that again it's like what do I like musically and then like during that time in my life it's like what do I like in life you know yeah. like who do I want to associate with who do I want to be with like what brings me joy um yeah it was like therapy I don't know like making this record is like therapy it's a therapeutic time yeah no that's that's amazing man i think that's what music is and touching upon you know being on quarantine and this idea that you know we're all at home i think music right now is something that is amazing for you know us that we get to listen to body of work and it's good that you know you're in a space where this feels great to release and it's therapeutic and it's going to help you out in the future totally man hope it helps other people out too exactly um man uh yet again so happy that you were a part of you know studio one really happy that we've had this conversation uh thanks for you know taking the time out you know um i hope you know you have a great rest of the day you know i can't wait to see this record live you know um, i'll be in toronto you know just waiting <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> um, thank you so much man amazing questions really great interview really thanks, appreciate man. it really appreciate it thanks again man have a great yeah. rest of the day thanks Alex. yeah take care take care peace